back with uh, Mike DeCourcy from Fox, BTN, and the Sporting News. Kevin Brockway from CNHI Peppers as well. A little bracketology talk last night. I was watching two great games, Mike. The, the Duke-Virginia game. Uh, Duke, the only ranked team in the ACC. Virginia goes in there, battles. It was fun, great environment. They get out of there with a win on a, a last-second three. They're only one of 11 up until that point and hit a last second three to get out of there with a win. And then Texas and Kansas, another great game. Um, I saw, I was watching uh, Scott Van Pelt afterwards and they had Lenardi on, of course. And he talked about that had pushed Duke down a bot to the bottom of his two line, which uh, yeah, I would have imagined that, but uh, looking on yours as well. Um, have you changed yours yet? Cause I'm. No, it comes up in this afternoon, but it's interesting because in order to get it done, um, I have to get it at least started on Monday uh, and right. put everybody. And before the games, I put everybody in a place or most everybody. Where you think they're going to be. Yeah. And then so the 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 number the last number one seed literally slipped through two people's hands last night in the course of last evening's games. Uh, you had I had uh, I will I will tell you, I had Duke as my last one as the evening began and obviously they lost in the seven o'clock nine o'clock window uh so they went down and then here comes kansas okay now it's yours can you hold it nope uh they lost late <laughs> to texas uh and so then arizona who, which was playing simultaneous to texas but all along was well ahead uh and so uh, they will they will have uh an opportunity to get that last one, uh, I think now. I think that's who it'll be. So very interesting the way the after uh, the evening went uh, with uh, with two teams losing uh, the number one seed in the space of four hours. Well, and we look um, the Illinois is the team that could be they're playing as good as anybody in the Big Ten right now, and they could be the highest ranked. Uh, Big Ten team when it when it's all said and done. Right now, I know Purdue is up there, Michigan State's up there, Ohio State is up there, not, but Illinois is just playing. That's that was a big win for them over Indiana. The way it it was viewed uh, in uh, on the road, Indiana had just didn't have an answer for them. They couldn't stop them in the second half. So Illinois is really kind of re resurgent, and they. They want that Big Ten title, man. You you can just tell they're they're tired of hearing about Purdue and want to hear any more of that crap. Uh, and, and and I've got it. No dog. I don't have a dog in either of those fights. But I can just you can see it from afar. Um, Illinois is sick and tired of not getting the 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 talk in the Big Ten. They're like, hey man, what about us? And they're up there. Yeah, you know, last year you had the unusual circumstance of. Uh, the cancellations uh, that that happened because of COVID, and so uh, I, I don't maybe I don't think anybody played a full Big Ten schedule, and everybody, most everybody played a, a varying number of of games, and so they at one point said we will go by winning percentage, and in Illinois finished second on winning percentage, but I think there's some kind of like games ahead calculation, like if you were playing baseball, that they would have won. So a lot of Illinois fans very salty about that, feeling that they uh, were hard, you know, that sort of got a rough deal uh, and still kind of like, I think that there were some Illinois fans who sold t-shirts that they were the real Big Ten champs or whatever. Uh, and so I think that, I, you know, I, I said on Big Ten basketball and beyond on, Sat on Sunday night that one of the things that I like about this matchup tonight and about the race that seems to be heating up between the two of them, although not certainly not exclusive to the two of them, is that they both really want this title. And Purdue, that's tradition. And that's the Gene Cady tradition. They, you know, Winning Big Ten titles meant a lot to the program. And so that was huge. And, and then obviously Illinois kind of wanting to get back for last year. And so I, I think it's pretty cool. That that they that they're in the middle of this. I, I I don't think that they're that they will stay alone necessarily. I don't think that uh, that the others that are up there are done. Uh, Wisconsin is not done. Ohio State, Michigan State, they're not done relative to the race. I think they still will have a lot to say about it, whether it's them or someone else. 
but it is it, there is an, a very interesting uh, toe to toe between the two of those. And if Purdue wins tonight, they'll have a, an advantage in that they'll have swept the Fighting Illini. And so then Illinois would then have to go out and put up a better record to to get the outright title. I, I think Big Ten would award dual titles anyway, but uh, I think Purdue would be like, yeah, yeah, but we're the real champs because we got them both times. Yeah, and the fact that we would have to deal with that again uh, just – is, is insanity, but it is what it is. But yeah, uh, you look down through here, Illinois at 10 and two, then you've got one, two, three, four teams right behind them with just three losses. I, I love this big 10 race. Um, this is, this is fun. Yes. Uh, I mean, this is just fun. I don't think Ohio state has a chance to win the big 10 title. And, and just because I just don't think that they're in that category. Um, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Purdue, Illinois. I think Illinois is the strongest right now, but that doesn't mean that uh, Purdue doesn't have as good a shot. I think those are the two best teams. Um, Wisconsin has to be on. Uh, I, I think that they're, of those three, the most susceptible because they don't have as many weapons. They have different sorts of weapons, but not they don't have the inside game that those two teams have. Um, that's just why I see those two, two teams and, uh, kind of up there, but I, I love this race. It's just fun to watch. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I think Kevin would agree with this, that the people who in certain parts of the country and in certain occupations, uh, meaning, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the football areas, the, the people who do national sports talk for a living, whether it's on television or radio, and have so much to keep in the air. And so, all right, college basketball, NFL, NBA, this is broader appeal. It's easier to talk about. It's easy to talk about the NBA because you talk about six players and you, you've got it covered. So there are a lot of the national voices just say one month sport, college basketball, kick it to the side. But those of us who follow the game, and that includes the thousands of fans in Bloomington, Lexington, Lawrence, Durham, Chapel Hill, uh, the, and, and not just exclusive to those places. Um, understand that this is a fabulous sport that, that is interesting all winter and, and is most interesting in March, but also most, you know, next most in February when races like this are playing out. Uh, yeah. I, 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 the Big Ten Championship matters. I mean, it doesn't matter as much as a Final Four, but it matters a lot, right, Kev? I agree, and I think, too, you're playing also, I think, this time of year for seeding, too, as you talk about with the bracketologies and so forth, is, you know, part of the NCAA tournament is, you know, if you can get that one or two seed, man, you've got, you know, an easy matchup to start, a less fresh matchup. But playing for championships is interesting. I know, I remember one time, Flor I remember a few times Florida, they would cut down the nets if they clinched, you know, an SEC regular season title, which, which I always thought was interesting, but appropriate perhaps but here's the other thing too that i find interesting now with these expanded conferences is the balanced schedule and people will always gripe and complain about that too does it does a regular season title mean as much when you're not playing every team once or every team twice and you know that's that's something that comes into play too but i, I you know i i think this is a you know a great race and i think in a conference like the big 10 basketball wise where there's so much passion and i mean you take a look at the crowds are so full uh, unlike the SEC or unlike some other conferences. Uh, Big 12 is a pretty passionate. ACC is a passionate basketball conference. But in, in those kind of basketball conferences where you have that kind of passion and you have those full gyms, it, it really means something, uh, especially in the fan base. 